Welcome back to Tech Radar. I'm Matt Phillips. Today, I'm joined by our senior computing editor, Matt Hansen. How you doing, Matt? Hey, Matt. Yeah, I'm good. Cheers. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. And you're joining Excellent. me today, Matt, because the AMD Ryzen 5000 processors are failing, or some people are receiving them and they're just not working on arrival, which is crazy. Um, but I think before we jump into the story fully, let, let's jump back a little bit. What is the AMD Ryzen 5000 processor? Why are they important to the industry? Yeah, so uh, AMD has been a bit of a success story um, lately. Uh, last year, it had a fantastic run of popular products um, and its latest series of desktop GPUs based on the, its uh, Zen 3 architecture, mm. these uh, Ryzen 5000 series processors, have been really well received by both critics, we, we, we thought they were great, and by people who've managed to get their hands on them. And what's been quite exciting is that um, it's really shaken in Intel, because Intel, they still have a huge, huge lead when it comes to CPU market share. Sure. Uh, AMD has been slowly chipping away at that by releasing some really great processors. And the AMD Ryzen 5000 series of processors launched late last year sort of continued putting that pressure on Intel. And so we start to see AMD clawing more and more market share back. It's complicated matters a bit because a lot like GPUs released recently, it's quite hard to get hold of these uh, CPUs. Um, we ordered one and it took a couple of months to get to us. Sometimes because of COVID-19, obviously slowing down production, a lot of pressure on um, AMD and its partner to um, create the chips and just, just a huge amount of demand really. So, so there's a lot of hype around these chips. Exciting stuff. And competition is always good. It's always going to drive people forward. If yes. the chips work when they arrive at your door. Yeah. But it seems like at least one user is having a lot of issues with this. So explain what's going on. Yeah, so it's it's a, it's a bit of a complicated picture, but basically at the weekend, a um, it, it wasn't a user, it was a um, system builder right. called um, Power GPU. Mm -hmm. And um, they build um, desktop PCs and then ship test them and then ship them out to their customers. And at the weekend, they posted on Twitter um, saying basically that they'd ordered a, a large amount of AMD 5000 processes like system builders do. And a worrying number of them arrived in a non-working state and they call mm. it dead on arrival or DOA. Um, and so they, th th in the original tweet, which they've deleted, which is quite interesting, but in the original tweet, they sort of gave some numbers. So they said they ordered 50 AMD Ryzen 9 5950X processors and eight of them eight out of 50 were dead on arrival yeah um, out of 50 amd ryzen 59000 x processors four were dead on arrival and um and they, they, there were some others as well and but but basically this was a larger than expected amount of dud units and what what the company said was that they they, they tested them they took them out um of the because they, they build the pc then they test them before sending sure. them to their customers they'd find they didn't work they swapped it out with a, a different amd processor and it worked so they led them to believe that it was the processor which was at fault and that caused a bit of a stir because that that is a that is quite a lot of uh, quite a high percentage there's always a certain amount of processes when you Naturally, buy in bulk, yeah. like anything mm -hmm. which don't work um so that was quite a high failure rate and that got a lot of people um talking on twitter some replying to power gpu and saying yeah you know what i ordered a amd 5000 processor and it didn't work whilst others were saying nope i've ordered it and it's absolutely fine um some people were accusing power gpu of being anecdotal and you know mm. and scaremongering and power gpu like i said they took down the original tweet yeah which is a bit like okay if they change their mind as something come to light um but they they've continued to reply to people and they've continued to sort of defend their position so mm -hmm. that you know they said look we've, we've got a lot of chips and this is what's happened they also point out why would we be saying this publicly if it wasn't true one because it would not be great for their relationship with amd sure. but also it kind of it would scare away potential customers for sure but you know they wanted to highlight that no none of their customers would get a, a dead cpu mm -hmm. in their machine it just meant they would have to swap it out sure so it was a yeah a bit complicated because that is just one um sort of you know one anecdotal story exactly and, and and sort of amd have responded right they've given you comment on this and basically in that they say uh, i'm just going to scroll down and get the comment 
right. AMD is looking into the claim by Custom PC Builder regarding higher than expected failure rates they're experiencing with the Ryzen 5000 series desktop processors. We are unaware of any similar issues at this time. So, so it seems like, yes, I mean, obviously that's a pretty boilerplate statement. That's the sort of thing you'd expect, but it seems like this issue maybe isn't as widespread. And, and like you say, there's always going to be a failure rate with these kind of things, you know, but yeah. hopefully not a sort of 8 in 50 failure rate, which is, yes. which is pretty rough, right? So, yeah, so it was, yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, uh, one is that if, if, if we'd seen that sort of high number of failures across the board, I think this would be a huge news story in mm -hmm. a way, because I think we would hear more about this. So in a way, when AMD say that it hasn't heard of others um, similar high failure rates that kind of is believable um hardware unboxed which is a website and twitter account that they, they kind of dug into it they asked a few um australian based pc parts retailers and they heard that the failure rates were pretty normal right uh, for them so it was <laughs> below um two percent you know so then it's like well was power gpu have they been unlucky with a batch sure or is it their fault mm. as in like have they incorrectly installed the processor sure bent it in damaged it uh, put it in the, maybe a wrong part and if that's the case that's incredibly embarrassing because this is a company which is supposed to be building pcs if you sure. then publicly call out amd and it turns out it's because you've been building the pcs wrong that's, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty, whole other news story that's yeah, a whole other news story yeah. um but i'm curious then so amd obviously make all the chipsets for for next generation game consoles as well right like all the ps5 and the yeah. xbox and so are we likely to see this problem do you think if it is a problem let's let's pretend that the failure rates are true are we likely to see that migrate into the to ps5 and xbox space I, I haven't heard of many of those arriving dead dead on arrival kind of oh thing. yeah no 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 not at all i mean because these are desktop pc processes which apparently have the problem right and it's like the higher end ones seem mm -hmm. to be the work according to power gpu it was the ryzen 9 chips which had the highest failure rate and with it so that's even though yes you're right that um, both the Xbox Series X and S and the PlayStation 5 have AMD processors. Uh, well, it's very different, very different hardware. So different I don't think so. Game. And like I say, the <laughs> amount, the sheer amount of units that both uh, Sony and Microsoft have shipped, you know, with that kind of failure rate, we would be hearing about it. So I, I, I don't think anyone has anything to worry about from the consoles. I also don't think consumers have anything to worry about because I think if this is a problem, it's kind of more for these companies which are bulk buying them to put into their own PCs. And if they're doing their job correctly, they're testing the PCs before they send them out. And so they'll swap it out. So at the end of the day, you might have to wait longer for your custom build PC, but you shouldn't have to worry about um, a, a, a pre-built PC with a dodgy CPU. Yeah. If you buy the CPU on its own, there's always a chance it might come back you know you might it might arrive and it, it doesn't work but that should be fairly fairly low and um you should be able to just replace that pretty pretty easily yeah i'd have thought order. amd would honor that kind of thing for sure yeah well, and the retailer would yeah yeah exactly thank you for joining me matt really appreciate it let us know down in the comments below if this kind of thing puts you off diving into the amd architecture here i'd be really interested to hear what you guys have to say if you enjoyed this video please do drop a like consider subscribing to tech radar on youtube so you don't miss any of our future AMD coverage, and we will cover it if AMD respond. Also, first link in the description I'll make sure is to Matt's article, so I'm sure you'll update that, Matt, if AMD come out with any sort of more substantial uh, statement about this, or are there any changes to the story worth keeping an eye on that. Thanks oh, again definitely. for joining me. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks again for joining me, and uh, we will see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.